Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I am a huge fan of cars used in old British TV series filmed between the late 1950s and late 1990s. Join me on a journey as we look back on over 40 years of British television and its relationship with the automobile. I made a selection of videos last year talking about a lot of these series and I'm doing it again to make them even better. Bold as a knight in white armor Cold as a shot from a gun If you should look For a man who loves danger To whom love is a stranger This man is the one One of the series that possibly is not particularly well remembered these days is the BBC's answer to the Avengers, which they did actually make, and it was called Adam Adamant Lives. It was made between 1966 and 1967. It only lasted for two series, and there were only 29 episodes made. Of those, there were two series, and... The second series was only two episodes left out of 13. And there's a brief four minute um, audio recording of the first episode of the second series. It's not got the budget of the Avengers, but it does have some of the production personnel who actually worked on both of them. Sidney Newman, who was regarded as one of the creators of the Avengers and Doctor Who for that matter, actually worked at Adam Adamant Lives. He was the one who developed the series for television. He didn't come up with the concept himself. Um, that was Richard Harris and a chap called Donald Cotton. Donald Cotton was one of the people who worked on Doctor Who. In fact, um, Verity Lambert had actually worked on The Avengers before Doctor Who with Sidney Newman. I think she only worked on one episode of The Avengers in the very early series, but she was the um, producer for Adam Adamant Lives. The concept behind Adam Adamant Lives is a bit weird. It's sort of this very short thing that sums up The Avengers, kind of, um, although not really because... If you want to talk about the Avengers in general, it's a little bit, it's a lot more complicated than this. But what everybody knows about the Avengers is that there's a chap who has kind of Edwardian tastes, who's paired with a, a young, attractive lady. And Adam Adamant Lives has an Edwardian gentleman paired with a young, attractive lady. The capability of the young lady in Adam Adamant Lives is a bit different from the Avengers. Um, she is kind of an amateur, but she's a lot less able to defend herself in a fight and things like that than um, the main protagonist would be, or Mrs. Peel would be, um, if we're talking about the Dino Rig episodes of the Avengers, but most people these days when they think about the Avengers, think of Dino Rig. Also, the character in question, the, the, the Edwardian gentleman, is actually from Edwardian times. He's from 1902. It's not the case, rather with um, Patrick McNee, whose kind of manners and, and dress sense uh, and things like that are sort of Edwardian. It's more the fact that actually he is from 1902. And Gerald Harby, played Adam Adamant, gets frozen by his arch-villain, uh, well, I think he's called The Face, in 1902. And he wakes up in a building site in 1966, having been... Um, freed from a block of ice, so he's been in suspended animation. It's a you know, Doctor Who style concept, I suppose, but it would fit into the Avengers, I think. And he wakes up in 1966, very disorientated, and a 
a young lady called uh, Georgie Jones, played by Juliet Harmer, finds him on the streets of London uh, and um, it really kind of guides him around what is now the modern world, where he realises for a long, long time that he, he's he been sort of forgotten about. If he'd lived, he would be over 100 years old. And, you know, he doesn't really know what's sort of going on, but he just knows he has to fight crime and that's what he does. Somehow Adam Adamant acquires a car, we'll talk about that in a little bit. He acquires a flat in the city of London because his former address had been demolished to make way for a multi-storey car park, so he decides to to build his house on the roof of the car park, which sounds, you know, a lot more exciting than it actually is, really. It just means they go into the car park and behind one of the walls at one of the stories is his, where he lives. It's not that exciting, really. Juliet Harmer um, rides around on, on a little Vespa. We'll get to talk about that a bit later. And in the second episode of the series, which is actually set in Blackpool and filmed in Blackpool for once, um, Death Has a Thousand Faces, he acquires a former Punch and Judy and, um, man and musical artist um, called William E. Sim, let's check the name to get that right, uh, played by Jack May, who you would know from series like Count Duckula, where he played Igor, so that was a big part of my child anyway, and uh, The Archers, a radio series where he played Nelson, that's my mother's department more than mine, and that's probably the last reference you'll hear to The Archers on this channel. Directors like Ridley Scott actually cut their teeth on Adam Adam at Lives, if you, if you can believe that. Ridley Scott actually directed an episode or two of Adam Adam and Lives. The writers were people like Tony Williamson, um, who helped Sidney Newman develop it for television, Richard Harris, who also wrote a couple of episodes of The Avengers and other series, and Brian Clemens, amazingly enough, him who sort of make people believe in some ways that he'd created the Avengers, although he did write the second episode of it, so you know, you've know got to give him credit, and later he was the producer and script editor, and he, he did create the new Avengers of the professional, so we'll give him that. Actually, one of the episodes we're going to talk about today was remade later as an episode of the Avengers, so it kind of worked other way, you know, in different ways. There was an episode of Danger Man that was, um, was reworked, actually, um, in two episodes of the Professionals, a little bit later on so you know all these p people working on all these series in the 1960s and 70s they they really all kind of had shared ideas and you can really see that being made on videotape in black and white as opposed to color and film as the avengers was by 1966 means that adam adam and lives has a very very old-fashioned and data quality to it and the dvd releases have been cleaned up a bit but you know you you really can't expect amazing screen grabs from this which is why I'm, I'm i'm having to explain so much about it but anyway let, let's get into some of the cars used and adam adamant lives so in 1960 the two main vehicles that you see in adam adamant lives of uh, uh, Georgie Jones' little scooter, that's a 1966 Piaggio Vespa 50. Obviously, if you're a mod and you're going around London in the 60s, then, you know, having a little Vespa's what you need to do. Uh, trendy lady and everything like that. Adam Adamant himself, who suddenly acquires a driving license between the first and second episode, also acquires a very nice 1965 Radford Mini DeVille GT sort of based on the uh, Mini Cooper of the time, but with um, a bit more kind of pizzazz and modified by Harold Radford, who was a coach builder in London. If you want to see what um, a modern Radford might look like, then you can have a look at the link in the description below where um, James Martin from JM on Cars has actually re reviewed a Radford Mini sort of reimagination that's the year 2000. The car of using Adam Adam at Lives has, has registration number AA1000, and that car still exists. It's kind of like a, a greeny brown colour with like a tan um, upper section. I'll, I'll, I'll um, 
um, put a photograph of the car actually towards the end of the episode so you can see what it looks like in colour. So A1000, that car still exists, it goes to shows and things. The scooter was LLO 77D. In the first episode of Adam Adamant Lives, the villains drive a 1946 Rolls Royce Silver Wraith. That's kind of a trend in a lot of these series of the 60s. The villains often drove big, large Rolls Royces, often often black ones. Obviously, in black and white, it, you know, I, I assume it's black. In the episode Sing a Song of Murder, there's another Rolls Royce. It's a 1965 Rolls Royce Phantom 5. Um, the registration number is PPB1. And it was actually owned by a company called Patrick Barthrop Limited, who used his initials for um, this particular car. So he was Patrick Peter Barthrop, uh, and he was his car, PPB1. Another car that actually plays a prominent role in Adam Adam and Lives, or the episode anyway, is a 1953 Austin A125 Shearline Hearse. In the Terribly Happy in Barmers, um, there is a, a road accident that happens with with the hearse, and um, it's not the same one as used in The Prisoner, as some people might have said. It looks a bit like it. It's not the same. Um, and you, actually, in the episode of The Avengers This Is Based On, which is called Bizarre, there's no hearses in that at all, which is interesting. I think there's less location filming in The Avengers than there is in... Adam Adam and Lives equivalent episode. It's very strange. Um, but anyway, that's enough about some of those. Let's move on to some of the um, other cars used in the series. So in the episode The Doomsday Plan, there's a 1961 Austin minivan, um, 420 EOM. The, some of these screenshots are a lot better quality than others. It just depends on the source of the material and whether or not it's been cleaned up. In The Terribly Happy in Barma is one of the cars that gets involved in road accidents in the 1961 Austin Healy Sprite. Again, that's about as good as the footage gets. In a sinister sort of service, which is the last episode of Adam Adamant Lives, there's a 1963 Bedford CA um, with registration 197GLK. What you've got to bear in mind when looking at all these, and the reason there's not that many cars in Adam Adamant Lives, is not just because um, about 11 episodes don't exist of it, it's also because if you're filming in a studio and you're using videotape for most of what you do, you have to go and actually do a film insert of anything that you that you want outside of a studio, which becomes very expensive. So there's not that many cars really in this, in this series to see, although there are some interesting ones. There's another Bedford CA, this time a CAL, which is a longer version, um, 8819MG in the, in the Doomsday Plan. In Black Echo, there's 1962 Comma CA petrol tanker. And probably most interestingly of all, because it's uh, not, not exactly a common car for Britain in the 60s, a 1963 Ford Galaxy 500 in the crazily named Allah is not always with you. In the Doomsday Plan, there's also a 1965 Ford Cortina that goes into the um, car park where Adam Adamant lives. That's um, EYK213C. Again, in a sort of service, there's a 1955 Morris LD2 van. In Black Echo, there's another Rolls Royce Phantom 5. This time, um, a, a car by, that's coached up by Park Ward. Um, in Death as a Thousand Faces, you see a Thames trailer that's been used to put the Blackpool illuminations up. Um, that's one of the plot points of the episode. In The Terribly Happy Embalmers, the, the sort of accident that happens with the hearse is caused by three cars going to a junction too quickly. The Healy, uh, Healy Sprite 
the Shearline Hearse and a 1961 Thames Trader. The last car I'll mention because I think that's a, a, a kind of a, just about it in terms of what's the interesting car used and element lives that aren't background cars is a 1961 Vanden, Prince, Vanden Plaid Princess for a little limousine, 55 COX. That does look like the one from the, the prisoner, but actually isn't because it's got a different registration number. So is Adam Adamant Lives worth watching in 2020? Well, that depends on your point of view. It's pretty much a cross between the early episode of Doctor Who and it's got the same budget as Doctor Who had at the time. But it, it's trying to be the Avengers, and it kind of succeeds and kind of doesn't. You can put a lot of the same actors, directors, writers into a series as, say, the Avengers, and hope it comes off well. And unfortunately, the Avengers was be was better funded, and it was a very mature series by this stage, and it was very good, and that meant that Adam Animate Lives comes off as a slightly cheap knockoff. It's a little bit of a shame because there's a lot of imagination behind it and you know it, it really might have done better had they had a bit more budget but they didn't. Whereas Doctor Who just succeeded because it succeeded and you know we won't talk about that on this channel. Anyway thank you ever so much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Please don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below. Please visit my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. And also my Instagram page, instagram.com forward slash Lloyd underscore vehicle underscore consulting. Thank you.